folks, I've got with me this very interesting man. His name is Andy Kurz. Uh, Kurz spelled with K-A-H-R-S, which that name has uh, has some connotation in regards to where it was. I actually found out that Kurz is Greek. From uh, means macarius, but it also means blessed. And this man <laughs> is very blessed because he's been uh, touted often as being uh, t- what's the term? Uh, the positive is probably one of them. Uh, but uh, you, you've been you've been treated with respect in so many ways you've uh, actually decided to do a lot of things but let's start with your past yeah go uh, <laughs> so um you were um recognized for uh, being uh, the bluesman of the year due to the fact that um on spotify uh, because of the one uh, tune, which is If You Love To Be Right, which, funny enough, was the first tune that I heard from you, and then I started delving through your past mm-hmm. and your present, and I saw that you released the hammer, so we'll be touching these points as we go along. Uh, the You are uh, a native of Nashville, Tennessee, right? So I'm actually from Georgia, which is Atlanta, okay. which is about four hours south of Nashville. Okay. Yeah. And um, I know, I don't think I got your birth date because it's not on, on the web. Um, how old are you? I'm 34. My birthday is actually Christmas Eve, 1989. So nice. one week, yeah, one week before the 80s were over. Mine's October 23rd, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to be 50. I feel okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Who doesn't? Nah, you don't look at um, the the fact that you actually uh, are currently doing a rhinestone tour. Are you still on the tour? Yeah. So it's kind of like it's more like here and there. It's not like one big. Um, okay. That's not like one big tour. It's as they come up. So yeah, it's rhinestone. The songs of Glenn Campbell, which. Uh, it came to me kind of uh, out of nowhere back in 2018. And so we're actually doing one in Ohio a week from Saturday and then another one in, or no, Indiana a week from Saturday in Ohio next month. Oh, so a little bit cross country sounds like, mind you, the, those states are pretty closer together than they uh, are. Okay. They're, they're both uh, in the Midwest. I lived in Berkeley, California for like four years while my wife was in grad school. So um, that's where that started. Yeah, it's like, you know, next to San Francisco. Oh, okay. So that's what, that's why. Because they mentioned that you did move with your wife right. in 2014 <laughs> uh, while she was doing her studies. Um, and that I'm trying to think what else. Um, uh, I did a, a, a dive even finding out where you were and it started off going atlanta georgia but you're you're from uh another hometown uh and then north of atlanta yeah okay so you followed your wife to san francisco and then from San, san san francisco you went to nashville tennessee right that's right yeah and and that's where you're currently residing that's where I am right now. Actually, I'm just at this exact moment. I'm a little mm-hmm. south of Nashville in a place called Murfreesboro. I'm opening up for an artist named Evan Bartles in a couple hours this evening. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh. it should be fine. So I, I really thank you for doing this because it takes time out of your day. Uh, but uh, yeah. it's fun to actually do. Now, uh, Spotify, like I mentioned, they did... Uh, Celebrate your success with God Blues and Best of Blues 2022, yeah. um, where, where your vocal prowess and roots flexibility uh, proved itself quite well. Uh, and then in uh, 2024, uh, there's a note that I found that says that there's a new acoustic project that you're releasing halfway. Yeah. Um, and over the years, I, I 
I know I'm probably flubbing this number, but I've only been able to find a number that makes sense. 17 years of being in the music career? Yeah, about that much, I would say. Maybe, I mean, you know, really getting into it about that long. I would say performing closer to like, or performing at a decent level, probably closer (laughs) to like 15, 14 or 15. Because I know that you also teach. Uh, I, yeah. I came across certain uh, certain recent comments about uh, being hired for events as well, uh, uh-huh. and I'm going. It might, he must be traveling like crazy because, based on this, he's going to Nashville, Tennessee, and he's going to other places outside of it because he's being hired. And I'm going. Well, it's probably no longer in San Francisco. Yeah, no, no longer there. It's just, it comes with the territory of playing music. You got little jobs all over the place, teaching here, gig there, recording there, right there. It's a lot of okay. driving around. So uh, the the whole reason why I reached out uh, in the beginning was the fact that you came out with the hammer. And I always thought that you'd be a very interesting individual to talk to about that. Because you you composed the song. And uh, actually played it in a keep it simple method. There's no no yeah. no big fanfare. There's no uh, no uh, additional instruments. Just quite simple and quite a good ballad. But it's about uh, Aaron. Uh, Hank Aaron. Thank you, uh, baseball player. For those that don't know who he is, born on the 15th of February. 2000 uh, sorry 1934 <laughs> and died sadly on the uh, 22nd of January 2021 so uh, tell me you mentioned that you did it as an homage to uh, Hank Aaron who above and beyond being just a black baseball player he was also civil uh, civil rights activist in, in many senses So what was your inspiration to actually start thinking about this and putting it into form? So, yeah, thanks for asking. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm happy with the song. Um, Growing up in Atlanta, he he played for the Atlanta Braves. Um, They they used to be in Milwaukee and then they moved to Atlanta. So he actually broke that record. Are you familiar with Babe Ruth? Yes. He was, uh, yeah, so Babe Ruth, you know, he held the home run record for forever. He was a white guy. He played before the MLB was integrated by Jackie Robinson. So Hank Aaron was kind of like the second generation of black players. And um, he he uh, beat home Babe Ruth's record in 1974. We actually just had the 50th, 50th anniversary of that night. Um, I believe it was April 8th in Atlanta. And um, uh, it, as it, as he was leading up to that, he just got... I forget the exact number. It was at least hundreds of thousands of pieces of mail. Um, I think about a third to half of which were hate mail, including like death Mm -hmm. threats, kidnap threats against his wife and children. Just awful. All all the kind of terrible things you would expect when you hear about, you know, the racism of that era. Not that it's over by any means, but that very vicious type of attack. And anyways, Mm -hmm. uh, I read his autobiography. I mean, so point is there I was always um, amazed by his story growing up in Atlanta he's like a hero he's like a he's like a, just a titan of not only baseball but just of the history and culture down there uh, you know as it goes you get older you start to humanize your heroes a little bit more want to know more about them and sometimes it's kind of disappointing in the case of Hank Aaron it was like really inspiring I was actually on my honeymoon in the Dominican Republic and uh, which is also just a giant baseball country I think uh, it the, has the second most number of players after the U.S. And um, we were on the beach and I started reading Hank Aaron's autobiography. And uh, I just, you know, I just knew then and there that I wanted to write. I needed to put my own spin on it. I just felt so inspired. He just just up against so much hatred and he just kept going. Um, originally, I think just because he loved the game so much and was so mm-hmm. passionate about it and about where he could take it. And then the closer he got to the record started seeing um how what he was doing was so symbolic for who he represented like as a voice for minorities and uh, obviously for african americans in the u.s but black people around the world anybody who's subjugated by the government or the culture and uh he just kept his motto was keep swinging 
there's a lot of failure in baseball. In fact, like, you know, if, if you succeed three out of 10 times, 30%, you're one of the greatest of all time. So uh, he just kept swinging. He beat the record and then he fought really hard for the rest of his life um, for representation, um, not only on the field, but in the front office and in the more organizational aspects of the game and in mm -hmm. sports and government in general. And um, but as he talks about the actual lead up to breaking the record, it's just incredibly emotional and inspiring. Someone under that amount of pressure, facing that amount of hatred, to just get up there and then do something so incredibly difficult and um, do it with such like poise. Uh, you know, he's he was a human, like like the rest of us. But it's kind of hard to see him as something not a little bit extra. No. So uh, when did you start right ball? Apart from being on the beach. During yeah. the honeymoon, and then going, ding! I really need to do this uh, for this man. Uh, yeah. Which I think your honeymoon was in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, based uh, on. The... Married in 2019, but because of COVID, it was like, ah. you know, COVID, and then delayed for the first time, and then the second time we scheduled it, I got COVID, so we delayed it again. You know how it goes during all that. 